Would you please join me in welcoming our Secretary General Ban Ki Moon to the King of Hope. Acting Foreign Minister Mr. Cho Taer, Ambassador Park Sung Il, President of UPUNA, Ambassador Chung Tae, Chairman of Korean Council on Foreign Relations, Ambassador Lee Ho Jin, Acting President of the United Nations Association of Korea, Your Excellency Archbishop and Acting Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, and Excellencies members of the diplomatic corps thank you for sharing this moment of celebration with me and with all of us and i'm also happy to be with so many distinguished senior ambassadors uh, whom i have met today and i thank you for all your contribution lifelong contribution uh, for korea's advancement uh, in the international uh, community. You are being followed and your footsteps are being followed by many young Korean diplomats whom I feel they are the hope of our future. And I thank you for your strong commitment at joining this uh, foreign ministry. Dear colleagues, thank you very much for all your very kind welcome. <coughs> Having seen this uh, video for just a few minutes, did it tells everything which I really wanted to uh, share with you, reflecting uh, 70 years of our work. Together with the United Nations, alone by the Korean people and government before we joined the United Nations, it's really touching and very moving. And I'd like to thank for all your very kind words. Having listened, while listening to your uh, statement, I was uh, a little bit confused whether this is a moment celebrating and commemorating 70th anniversary of the United Nations or just uh, still congratulating my election as a Secretary General. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, uh, Ambassador Park, you will use your magic power to make my wife as young <laughs> as when we got married. And when acting foreign minister Cho was saying that <clears throat> I look same, I'm same, even after 35 years. I hope you bring me back to 35 years. I still want to be as energetic as healthy, as young. But as far as my commitment is concerned, I can tell you proudly that it may be much, even more, I'm much more motivated as a Secretary General to devote all my energy and time for peace and stability and development. And when it, it comes to protecting human dignity and human rights, I'm the one who has been, who have been uh, speaking out, raising my moral voice, even though I do not have any hard, hard power as Korea or other some big countries maybe. But as far as I am concerned, all what I am here today is owing to your great help. And with this support, you can count on me. I will continue to do that. It will take a long time if we reflect all what had happened, transpired between the United Nations and Korea. Just looking at this video, I think our relationship started in 1947 when the United Nations has established the United Nations Temporary Commission on Korea, UNTUKO, which later became UNCRA. And then finally, they established United Nations Command because of this outbreak of Korean War. Then they established UNDP, UNESCO, UNICEF, all <coughs> humanitarian and development agencies. That was the beginning at the time of Korea's birth. 
we were just in front, even before we were able to walk a few steps, we were just attacked by this war. We are very proud that we have overcome this kind of tragic moment, turned into, transformed into one of the OECD countries, one of the 15th largest economic power. I think that we have to be proud. And there, we owe a lot to our friends and member states of the United Nations who are ably represented by respective ambassadors here. It looks like a small United Nations here. We can even adopt one general assembly, general assembly resolution here. We have a quorum. And I thank you for your contribution. This story is remarkable. As I'm serving as the Secretary General of the United Nations, I again owe to my distinguished senior Korea diplomats who have raised Korea up to this place. When Korea was admitted into the United Nations in 1991, just five years later, we were elected to the Security Council, then served another term until last year, second term in Security Council. Then after Security Council, Korea was elected to the presidency of the General Assembly. Dr. Han sung -soo served as the president of the General Assembly of 56th session. After five years, I became Secretary General of the United Nations, and I was re-elected, and I'll serve until the next year, end of next year. I think the Korean government should seriously think what is left after that. I know that Ambassador Oh Jun will become president of ECOSOC from July 1st this year. After having served already twice in the Security Council, and then ECOSOC president is going to be Korea's leadership. Then there is a clearly some issues. What international community expects from, the United, from Korea and what Korean government uh, should do? I believe answer is evident. They expect much more, much, much more from the Republic of Korea in terms of development, in terms of peacekeeping, I think Korea is one of the highest advanced in terms of human rights. And this experience uh, should be shared and given to many other people. I was one of the many very poor, unfortunate children during the time when United Nations command peacekeepers were there. At that time, UN blue flag, flag was the beacon of our home. Now I am humbled. Whenever I travel, almost the same conflict zones in Haiti you have shown, in many parts of Africa or developing countries, they see from me and they see still the United Nations flag as a beacon of their home then I'm very much motivated, humbled. That gives me much more strengthened motivation. Then what can I do for them? How can I expect the expectation of those people, young people, women, whose human rights are abused brutally? This is what I am doing. I will continue uh, to do that. There are many Flash points this time. I can name just 10 big fires are burning, starting from South Sudan, Syria, Mali, Central African Republic, Yemen now, many other places. The many refugees are moving desperately 
moving, migrating to the places, any places, they can find even better hope and opportunities for their life. United Nations is, is again very much humbled. There are 50 million refugees at this time, 51, 51 million. So how can we provide daily foods, sanitation, education, armament is heavily funded, peace and development is seriously underfunded. Just to think about that United Nations has to provide 51 million people every day, three meals, water, sanitation, education. This is a huge challenge. Still, I know that I'm very conscious United Nations has still need management and management reform, Security Council reform. United Nations is not accountable, not effective, not efficient, sometimes corrupt. These are normal criticism levied against the United Nations. United Nations was founded, as the charter says, to save the li human lives from the scourge of war. United Nations was founded to prevent, to, to stop another world war. I think in that regard, we have been successful until now. While we have seen many setbacks, failures, shortages. We have seen at least two genocides, which could have been easily prevented. Rwanda genoc genocide in Rwanda, genocide in Srebrenica. This all happened in 94-95. We are ob observing, commemorating 20th anniversary of Srebrenica genocide. I was in Kigali last year to celebrate 20th anniversary of genocide in Rwanda. Each time we pledged never again, never again, never again. Still we are seeing almost a genocide in Syria because of ideological differences. This should, be, should never be repeated. I feel responsibility, moral responsibility, and political responsibility. At the same time, members of the Security Council should also feel responsibility. They have not been able to unite. We have seen such a great strength when the United, Men United Nations member states are united. You have saved the Republic of Korea. You have saved tens of millions of people from hunger and poverty. When the United Nations was united at the dawn of the new millennium, 2000, we have proclaimed Millennium Development Goals. I think this is the most successful anti-poverty vision. But still, we have to go. That is why we, have to, we are now very seriously negotiating on future development agenda. What do we say? Post-2015 development agenda with the set of sustainable development goals, 17 goals. This covers all the spectrum of life. President Park Geun-hye just said, this is people-centered, people-centered. This SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, will be people-centered, planet-friendly, planet-conscious. That means we have to cover social, economic, and environmental dimensions. Those are three dimensions with 17 goals, SDGs, I think we can make this world much, much happier, more prosperous, and we can also ensure that there will be gender parity and human rights up upheld. These are the visions United Nations has now. 
celebrating means just we cannot sit and celebrate. We have to recommit ourselves to make this world better. That is what the United Nations is now doing. 2015, acting foreign minister said that 2015 is a special year. This is the year for global action. We need global action. We need solidarity. Otherwise, 193 member states, if they go all different ways, then there is no hope. But I am encouraged that member states are united in this future development agenda. They are united in climate change. We have to have, for the first time in the history, the universal and ambitious and very meaningful climate change agreement so that we can control the global temperature rise below 2 degrees Celsius. That's our two top priorities. Two top priorities. That's not for this year. That's not for Korea or United States or some other countries. That's for humanity. People-centered and planet friendly. That I count on the Republic of Korea. And each and every member state's ambassadors are representing here. Without that, you will have to reg regret, you will have to be morally responsible for our humanity. We have to think about our succeeding generations, our young people. One day, many people ask me, one day, what will be your achievement? What is going to be your legacy? I'm not working for my legacy. I'm sure that the historians and world will evaluate and judge about my legacy and achievement. What I'm committed is that I will lay a solid foundation where our succeeding generations can build upon and work together uh, to make this world better. Now we have some other priorities. In 2013, having learned serious mistakes which we made, United Nations has made, I initiated human rights upfront. The human rights should be brought up front in all our policies. And I'm now going through a very serious high-level review of the peace missions. How to make these peacekeeping operations and special political missions more efficient and effective, and adapting to changing situations. We are reviewing peace building process. Those are major review we are now going through on the occasion of 70th anniversary. We have to learn the lessons. Learn the lessons. Then can I just say that what the United Nations has been doing so far, have we been able to make this all uh, prevent all these conflicts? Why have you not been able to resolve Syrian crisis, Yemen crisis, or Mali, Central Africa, South Sudan, etc. Why Korean Peninsula is still at this time like this way? I can tell you that without United Nations, if there had not been United Nations, I'm sure that this world might, must have been much bloodier, much more tra tra tragic. I, I'm not complacent, I'm not complacent, but still we have to have uh, some firm belief, firm belief that we have to nourish this United Nations, that we need just so support and solidarity. Next year, we are going to, I'm going to host for the first time World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, Turkey. That will be the first time that how we can make 
our humanitarian support to more than 50 million people more effectively. Those are some broader visions. The first and foremost, we have to have a climate change agreement and this a sustainable development agenda agreed. And next year, we will go on that. In that regard, I have many advocates like yourselves, UN Association of Korea, UFNA, and also Korean Council for Diplomatic Relations. They are our cheerleaders, our advocates, and I'm sure that you will all continue as ambassadors of the United Nations. And I'm asking our respected uh, senior diplomats, please remain as not only honorary ambassadors of Korea, but work as honorary ambassador of the United Nations, global ambassadors. I, I hope that we will culture and cultivate more global visions. In this regard, I would like to really thank three agencies whose heads are here, as I just mentioned, and I really count on your continuing support. With your strong support and solidarity and commitment, I'm sure that we will be proud one day that I was there to make this world as now much more prosperous, much more peaceful, where everybody's human rights and dignity will be respected. And I thank you very much for your commitment. Thank you. Thank you.